Well, I'm going to start uh, today. Now, again, the, the, the name of this message is Resentment and Its Effects. And I want to uh, first give you, uh, bless God, the definition for the word resentment. It's a feeling of indignant displeasure because of something regarded as a wrong or an insult. Okay? And that's that's where resentment comes from. When you feel like you've been uh, wronged in some way or when or you've been insulted uh, by uh, somebody and you begin to resent you know you, you can feel that come up inside of you you know and i and i know uh, my my goodness i'll tell a story here uh, sometime about when god dealt with me all those years ago about resentment uh, you know i i had no idea but you know when you when you hold resentment against somebody and the minute that they come up or come around you all of a sudden sudden you feel something you feel something come up inside of you well that something coming up inside of you isn't god that uh, that something coming up inside of you is resentment and that does not need to be there in any shape or form uh, we're going to start uh, today in uh, matthew 6 um, uh, the fifth verse and we're going to go down through here and and it's going to talk about the uh, about prayers but the important part is the end of this but in the fifth verse it says some when thou prayest Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in synagogues and in corners of streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I send you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou prayest, uh, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when uh, when you pray... Use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. And, and then there's scripture that tells us that uh, he wants to be asked. He wants you to come before him and ask him, even though he knows what you have need of. He wants you to ask. Now, that uh, is something that's not made clear in the Scriptures as to the whys. I've just always figured that, that bless God, that, uh, that uh, like any father, okay, and not trying to compare him to our earthly fathers, but but uh, they, they want to be asked. You know, again, uh, uh, many times we, we don't have because we, we don't ask. And, uh, and that's really what goes on with the Lord. You'd be surprised how many people don't pray. And I, uh, I don't understand that because prayer is 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 a way of life. It, it, you study the scriptures, you find out that all these men, all these women, they were people of prayer, and you must become people of prayer. But you also have to understand that you don't need to be like the hypocrites. You don't need to be trying to pray, you know, and everybody listen to you and, and oh, what a beautiful prayer it was, and this, that, and everything else. I I can remember the. The first time that I was told that I was going to, I was going to uh, participate from time to time in prayer in the, in the Pentecostal church that I first attended, I, I remember that I memorized some scripture and I practiced that prayer all week long. And I, I can remember, uh, like it was yesterday, it came my turn. I was called upon and oh my, people came up afterwards and said, oh, you know, that is such a beautiful prayer, and oh, it's just this, and it was just that, and, and and I'll never forget the Lord spoke to me, and he said, but it wasn't from your heart, and all of a sudden, I began to realize I did not please the Father at all in, in that, and I learned a lot that day about that, and I, from that point on, I realized that prayer has to come from your heart. You have to, so the, you know, to pray for people to think that, oh, well, how nice it sounds, and uh, that, now that's not what this thing is about. Now there is public prayer. Uh, there should be pub public prayer, and uh, we have public prayer every time we get together. Okay, but uh, if you'll notice, it isn't uh, anything to do with how how uh, <laughs> how long it might be or or how extravagant that it might be. It's a it's a heart rooted prayer, and that's the prayers that he was talking about. Now he goes on to say here. He says, after this matter, therefore, pray ye, our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, 14, he gets down to something else here. And it's something that, again, that the few people uh, have really taken to heart. He says, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Well, we're going to get to some scripture here in a, in a little while here that's going to show you that, that bless God, that number one, they that the people shouldn't be acting toward or saying things, bless God, to, to cause that resentment to come up in you. All right? Uh, uh, the, the whole thing is that uh, uh, resentment uh, comes from unforgiveness and, and even hate is what it comes from. And, and bless God, brothers and sisters, you cannot afford not to forgive. Now, let me let me just give you my definition of, of forgiveness. Uh, bless God, when you seek God, repent, and and uh, forgive people that have spoken against you, acted against you, then let me tell you one way that you can know for a fact that 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 you've been delivered of that and you're walking free from that is when you keep. You stop bringing it up to other people, okay? And, bless God, when you quit thinking about it. Now, stop and think about that, all right? Because that, that's, uh, that's exactly the way this, this, thing, uh, this thing operates. Uh, if you still are thinking about it or still talking about it, you haven't forgiven anybody for anything. And that's important, brothers and sisters, that you latch on and you understand that. That you will be forgiven if you ask for for that forgiveness, okay? But the problem gets to be again that you know we we've gone into this thing where you know forgiveness seems to be one of these you know wholesale items that we just run out here and saying, oh golly gee Jesus forgive me, and then we just go back and sin somewhere else or the same sin over again, and oh Jesus forgive me, and uh, folks that that again is not what this is about. It, it's a uh, it, it, uh, repentance, it, bless God, has to be something that's done from your heart. You have to mean it, and you have to do what? Follow through with it. And you say, yeah, but you just don't have any idea in the world what such and such said or what such and such did. Well, let me tell you something. What such and such said or what such and such did is such and such's problem, Okay. And and well, what else could you say about it? I mean, dear God in heaven, it, it's not it's not one of those things that 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 you're responsible for. You can't you can't uh, keep people from acting the way they act or speaking the way they speak. But I'm going to tell you something: you have to do. You have to forgive them because if you can't forgive them, then your sins aren't forgiven, okay? And if your sins aren't forgiven, guess what? Your prayers aren't going to be answered. You're just must well be praying to, to, to the wall. Now, over in Leviticus, in Leviticus 19, uh, 17 and, and uh, um, 18 here, it says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Oh, boy. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So see you, and why is that? You rebuke your brother, your brother's going to have resentment, and then he's going to be in sin. So the old story of it is, you just keep your mouth shut about your opinion about everything and everybody. Things will work out a lot better. It'll work out a whole lot better for you. But see, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. You real now, now. Now this is going to get a little deep. Sometimes I, I uh, ask people to put on their Holy Ghost. Uh, high uh, water boots uh, so you can get through this but but folks the, the thing of it is that if you're harboring resentment you hate that person oh that's strong isn't it uh, and and it that, and that's the reason the lord wanted to be strong is because he wants you to understand that that bless god that this thing doesn't have anything to do with hate it's got everything to do with love all right now the 18 verse says thou shalt avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself i'm the lord so boy so now now if, if somebody does something wrong against you, speaks against you, resentment comes up in your heart and you hate them for it, 
you said that you'll not you'll not bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. Love is not you know love is one of those things that everybody seems to have, but very few people can exercise that in their lives toward other people. We are to love each other. There's there's no commandment in this world that will let you and I hate one another. It has to be what? It has to be love. Uh, boy, it, you know, I don't know where the church has been all these years, except sound asleep, as I keep saying. But, you know, there's so many, many things like this that if we're taught properly, could bring people out of some of the bondages in their life and be able, be able to move into some places that they have never known before. And, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing like being able to walk upright before the Lord God. There's nothing like it. But it, it, it's these things. you know. It, and, and, you know, some people think, well, you know, that, that, that really doesn't mean much. Well, you know, the Scripture says it's the little foxes that eat the vines. You know, it's, it's these things that you don't deem important are the things that bless God that are important. There is nothing of God's commandment is any less important than the other. And and I I, I, I see this uh, year in and year out. And, oh, what a difference that people's walks could be with the Lord God if, in fact, they could sit somewhere, sit under a prophet and learn and learn correctly. Uh, you know, there's nothing like uh, right, right teaching, then you begin to believe correctly. Then things begin to do what they really begin to, to, to change in your life. But I remember uh, years ago having a heel line, and the sister came up, and and she got it was in the line, and I I came to her, and I and I said, yeah, I said, what what can God do for you, uh, sis? And she said, well, she said I have cancer, I'm dying of cancer, and she said. Uh, she said, uh, I'm a I'm a Pentecostal preacher's wife, and she said, I came a long way because uh, I heard that God uses you in a mighty way through miracles and healings. And I said, well, that, that he does. And I said, uh, well, well, sister, let, let me tell you something. And at about that time, the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord uh, said to me, he said, you tell her to go home and to call her sister-in-law and tell her sister-in-law she wants to uh, to see her or to repent to her on the phone because she has held things against her. And if she'll do that, she'll be healed. Well, I told her that, and oh, you should have seen that lady's face. She was, um, it turned red as a fire truck. And she said, well, she said, you just have no idea. She said, you're meddling in something here and around, the, out back through the back door she went and out the church door she went and she went home and that was it well I knew that I had said what God wanted said so I didn't do anything about it and I don't know a number of months I don't know weeks or whatever it was went by and bless God all of a sudden one night <clears throat> there she was and she was in, in back in service and I got finished and she stood up and she said uh, prophet she said can I uh, say something I said yeah I said go right ahead and she said well you know she said, uh, that made me mad when you told me what you did. And I sort of sort of grinned. I, it was very evident that it made her mad. And she said, so I just went home and I said, that, that, was, not, that was not the way that God was going to do that. And she said, I uh, was on my deathbed. She said, they'd gotten that bad. And she said, uh, I didn't have but a few days, of food, but a few hours to live. She said, uh, all of a sudden, she said, I, I heard what you said. And she said, I called my sister-in-law, and, and she came over, and she said, I I repented to her for, for the, uh, the resentment that I'd held against her for all those years. And I said, and? And she said, and, I'm here today. She said, I begin to get better. She said, I'm totally healed. Uh, the folks, there's numbers of stories like that through the years that I've, uh, I've watched uh, God as he has delivered people. You know, many times God will deliver us in ways in which we don't want to be delivered. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you, you know, it's like I keep saying, you you just can't pick the way you want to be healed or pick the way that you want a miracle to come. And I've told so many stories about how it is that uh, that I'd uh, early on in my ministry how I got God put in a box and, and there was a certain this or certain that. Well, I just did 
same thing I did for countless others, and sure enough, it turned out the same way, and the angel came and and uh, and, and uh, brought me correction about the whole thing, and uh, uh, bless God, I began to see people uh, receive miracles and be healed in some ways that uh, that <laughs> definitely is not something that you see every day in in a, in a church service, and and uh, but the, what the angel was teaching me was that God will do it His way. See, I've had people say, "Well, you know, I'm I'm holding out here. I'm I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm supposed to be having an operation, and and I'm I'm believing God to God to heal me. I'm not not going to have that uh, operation." And uh, God was just speaking to me and said, you "Just tell them that I'll work the way I want to work, and that if they want to live, they better go have the operation." Now, folks, I realize that's not what people want to hear. People, and, and you know, people look at me as a prophet. But the kind of anointing that God has given to me is, as bless God, being, being, you know, the fact that I can just get to the prophet, everything. Well, you see, this doesn't lie within the gospel of this this uh, this prophet. This thing lies within the word of Almighty God. And and the sooner you realize that God has a reason for everything that He does, He has a reason. And if God if God is 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 going to uh, work. Uh, bless God, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. I've seen hundreds of thousands of people at this point in my ministry healed and given miracles. I've seen people raised from the dead, all through the name of Yeshua. And yet at the same time, I can't, I can't, I'm not God. I, 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 I can't make you be healed. I can't. All I can do is let the anointing that God has put into me flow out of me and you. You know, I'm always telling people, there's one thing I will guarantee you. You get one of my services. Bless God, I'll get my hands on you, or I'll speak if it's a huge crowd, and that anointing will come forth. And bless God, it will do in your life what God wants it to do, and it will do that. Uh, but again, I, you know, I can't control that. I, I people say, well, can you guarantee me that, uh, bless God, that if I travel all that way, that I'll be healed? I said, well, you know, many people, many people have have called and said those words to me and have come and been healed. And there's those that, that haven't. You know, again, your heart has an awful lot to do with all this. And uh, people come. You know, I've had people come and say, well, you know, he's not a real prophet because I went and I wasn't healed. Well, you need to talk to the other countless hundreds of, of people that have come and have been healed. Again, uh, you, you, you're you're trying to demand God to do something to this prophet that you've got no right to demand, nor do I. And, uh, I, you know, those, those things, and there again, Resentment comes in people's hearts over things like that, and uh, I can't, I can't control it, nor can I help what it is that God's going to do. I mean, I again, I produce an anointing which is of God, and it will do everything, including raise the dead. But I can't, uh, I can't cause that to operate. You, you know, there's so many, many things that come in into in those things. So you know, I say to people, you know, you, you go. I, I've, I've had people come and. And and tell them I said you know you need to you need to do what the doctor's telling you to do, and they look at me kind of funny and said well I I wouldn't think that you believe in doctors and I said well Luke was a doctor, you know I, I said he was one of the disciples I said there must have been a reason for Luke to been around, and I had no idea what Luke may have or may not have done with his medical whatever. But the fact of it is, I, I've had people actually get report back that they died because they were standing on faith. Well, you know, folks, again, uh, you just, you got to do what you got to do. I, I fully agree to that. But don't ever underestimate what God can do and how he's going to get it done. Okay? Don't, don't, don't ever underestimate him because if you do, you're going to make, you're going to make some real mistakes. If you, you know, well, you know, this, well, that, well, I got news for you. He's still God. He's on the throne and he will do. Now listen, he will do whatever he wants to do. That's the way God operates. I'm going to read out of, uh, out of, uh, Proverbs, the 10th chapter. And in the 12th verse, it says something here. It says, Take this stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Wow. You need to underline that. You need to, if you haven't got your Bibles open today, you need to mark that scripture down. You need to analyze. You need to meditate about that. 
that hatred stirs up strife. Now, strife is 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 bitterness, and uh, and sometimes becomes violent conflict inside of you. Okay, of which again, uh, God cannot, does not, and will never be able to bless. The eighteenth verse says, "He that hideth." hatred with lying lips and he that uttered a slander is a fool so you see uh, when you get uh, when you hide with, with your lips you know oh I love such and such well, and if, you, if you're holding resentment in your heart you're lying now is lying a sin? yeah afraid so and so th- this, th- this whole thing uh, bless God, gets deeper, and it gets deeper, and it gets deeper, and it gets deeper, doesn't it? And what you and I have to do is be aware. I want to teach you to be aware of sin. I, I want to teach you that every time you open your mouth, to bless God that you weigh whether or not you've spoken love or you're speaking hate out of your mouth. Because, folks, it's, it's all there. Well, you know, that's holy judgment. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bless God, the judgment lies in the hands of, of, of the Father, through the Son, and, and uh, the holy prophets that he has, has has to judge according to the Word. Okay? That's, that's what we have to do. That's not anything that anybody should ever want to do. I know in my case that that's something I dislike very, very much. When I have to do those kind of things, but let me tell you something: people, people without the understanding uh, that God gives to them, is such a mess, you know. And 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 I realize that, you know, we're all trying to do something. Okay, hopefully trying to get closer to the Lord, but uh, you know, until you are aware, until you are 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 deciding to be aware of the things in your life that are keeping you from the deeper things. And, folks, I, I you know, there again, the deeper things of Christ, they're all there. They all can be had. Even even what he said, even what I have done, you shall do a greater thing shall you do. But you're never going to get to even doing what he's doing as long as sin prevails in your life. Now, just stop and think about this. How different would this make you? I'm sure it would make it quite quite a bit different. If if in fact you never spoke against somebody, okay, you didn't hold resentment against them, but you just loved them. You know, and I've heard people I can remember early on, there was there was there was this one sweet lady and she must have been eighty years old, maybe older. And I, I, I can always remember comments that she had made. Well, now, Brother Deckard, you just love them anyhow. You know, you just, you just got to love them. It'd be something that would take place, and she'd, she'd know something about it, and she'd come to me and say that every time. You just got to love them, Brother Deckard. They just don't know what they're doing, but you've got to love them. And, and you know, I know God put that little lady in my life. I know at that time he did because I found something out. That bless God, you know, our place again is to love. Let God judge. Let God judge those that bless God that are that are so in strife and, and doing the things that they're doing, and he'll judge them. There's, you know, I, I think a lot of us try to think that we're trying to help help the Lord out. Well, you're you're really not helping him out. You're just getting yourself in trouble, okay? So the best thing to do is what? Just shut up and bless God. Love them anyway. Just say, you know, Lord, I love them. I, they don't know what they're doing. If they did, they wouldn't be doing it. So, Lord God, open their eyes and let them see what it is that they're doing. Well, now, before I, uh, before I, long, long before I, bless God, uh, got into the ministry, the Lord dealt with me on this subject. And, uh, you know, I started thinking back uh, through my uh, my life, and the people that I'd had problems with, that, you know, that I'd walk, I'd go out the door before and speak to them or go the other direction. And, you know, the Lord saw to it that uh, these people, and my goodness, I, I don't really even remember the numbers of those people at this time, but there were several. And all of a sudden, I'd go in somewhere, and there'd be somebody that was not I'd had a problem. 
And so I'd, I'd go up and I'd say, hello, and they'd say, look at me kind of funny and say, well, hi. And, and I'd say, you know, we had a little bit of a problem, you know, back when there was some of the case back a number of years. Yeah, I know we did. Well, I, uh, brother, I want you to forgive me. I, I was wrong. And you, you, and never one of those person, persons ever rejected and said to me, so, well, I got news for you. You you can just be that way all you want to be, but I don't forgive you. Every one of them looked at me and said, you know what? I can forgive you. And I found out something, folks. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. You know, I've had people say, well, I'll never go to that person because they're the one that did wrong. So they're, they're going to have to come to me. But you know something? What, what's what's the problem except the problem of your pride of you going up and saying, hey, forgive me, I was, I was wrong. Because if, you're, if your heart was wrong, you were wrong, okay? And you'd be surprised how many of those how many of those mountains can be removed like that? If you'll just take take the opportunity and the initiative to go up and say, forgive me, I was wrong. Uh, some of you that are listening today definitely need to take uh, take to heart uh, this thing that I'm saying, even right now. Some of you have uh, held resentment against people for years. You need to, you need because it's sin. You need to get that out of your life. You need to be delivered of that. And the only way you can get delivered of that is bless God, is to go to that person and and just flat, just you know, just humble yourself in the sight of the Lord God and say, look, I'm sorry, we've had a problem, and I I just want to want to tell you that that that, uh, that it was my fault. Whether it's your fault or it's not your fault, that's not the idea. The idea is open that door to restore a place of fellowship and to restore love. That is your place, and I, I hope those of you that are listening that need to hear that are taking this to heart today. That, folks, this is real. This, this isn't something uh, just, uh, again, an act to make yourself feel better. This is an act to get your life cleaned up so that you can go on with God and you, you can get get past some of these. You know, when you when you when you look at this thing and and begin to every day say, God, what is it? What is it you desire of me? Search my heart. Search my heart and show me what it is that you desire of me this day. What is it that I'm wrong? I'm gonna tell you something. God will begin to open up doors and begin to show you things that uh, I didn't say he would speak to you in an audible voice or a small a quiet voice, and he may do that. But, but there will be situations begin to come up, and you'll you'll begin to say, well, "Well, you know, I you know I thought I might have had that taken care of, and evidently I didn't." That's when you have an opportunity to jump in there and bless God. Do what? Just be a child of God. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And of course, there's a few of you have a little, little bit of a difficult time of loving yourself, but uh, you need to you need to get that taken care of too. But that's a that's a different message. Let's go to First John two, and uh, uh, this this is uh, of course uh, this whole thing with John is about love and his writing about such things. And the first verse says, "My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not, and if any man sin." We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we love him if we keep his commandments. There again, that's the stipulation of this thing. That that, uh, that uh, we know that we, uh, if we, uh, we know if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. Now listen, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Okay? So if you're holding resentment, resentment is what? A sin, and you don't think it is, okay, and and, and you're not keeping the commandments. All right? The truth isn't in him. Okay? Now listen, but whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye 
had from the beginning. The old commandment is uh, is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. Now, again, I I realize I realize, uh, brothers and sisters, the word hate is not uh, uh, something that is preferable uh, for any of us to use. Uh, it's hard to to say, well, you know, I mean, this this brother and I mean, this sister, we have a problem, but um, I don't hate them. No, no. According to Scripture, you either love them or you hate them. If you love them, you will have forgiven them, okay, and you will have gone on. Tenth verse says, and he that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion for someone in. Now listen to that. Him that loveth his brother, man, that is strong stuff, isn't it? He that loveth his brother uh, abideth, and there is none occasion in stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So, for that, that, I hope you understand what's being said here. That bless God that if you, if you hate your brother, if you, if you, you hold a resentment against a brother, against a sister, you hate them. And and, and 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 darkness has blinded you because, see, you don't see that as sin. You don't see that as hate. And that's where the devil has got you right where he wants to have you. Well, I ride you little, uh, little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I ride you fathers because you, you have known him that is from the beginning. I ride you young men because you have overcome the wicked. I write to you little children because you have known the Father. And it, it, isn't that precious? Now listen to the 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Now, the thing, the thing that is so important is to understand overcoming the wicked one. You see, Satan, once once you give in to sin, he'll feed that sin. He'll give you every reason in the world to hate your brother or your sister. Well, you know, you hear what they just said. Did you hear what he said about this or he said about that? Now let's go let's take this thing a little bit deeper, if we can, and we will. Uh if you judge, spread discord. We know, well, surely, if you've hung around me very long, you know that that's sin. Is that hating? Yeah, that's hating. That's a, that's exactly what that is. That 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 is hating. And bless God again. There there's there's no place in this world that uh, that's going to that, you know that that God's going to let that or tolerate that. Why? Because brothers and sisters, that just isn't the way. That is not the way that this thing works out. Now, uh, you know. John 3.16 talks about, For God so loved. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. He that is so loved, he loved us to the place he healed us, he saves us, he delivers us. Now, resentment destroys love. And God's image is love, isn't it? Resentment destroys love. Stop and really meditate about that today at some point in time and understand that, 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 bless God, that that's just the way that it is. That resentment absolutely destroys love. Love doesn't have an oper- opportunity to operate where there's resentment because it's, it's destroying it. So where does that, where does that come? Well, it comes, it comes from the fact that wrong teaching, wrong believing, Again, we, we, the church has never been strong enough. I, I've said over and over again, the church was too interested in building their own kingdoms to make sure so much that, that they didn't upset the people that the people left because of the people left, their money left, their money left, then their kingdoms couldn't be built. And I realize that's strong, but it's the truth. And because the, this is elementary Christianity, Christianity 101, I'm going to say. That's what this really is. 
These are things that should have been taught in the very beginning in every Christian church throughout the land. And I, I'm not saying that, bless God, that somehow or other these things were never spoken of. I think they probably were spoken of. I, the, <laughs> the problem with all of it was it wasn't spoken about in a by an anointing strong enough that it got down to you know people into the people's hearts. You know, I, you know, I've had people. Uh, criticize me in the past that I get on a subject and it seems like I just keep pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. And what they don't realize is that I'll take a message like this message and I'd take it into one of the churches and I'd, I would deliver to the church and I'd get home and I'd start praying next week. Well, what do I, what do, I do? And, and the Lord would say, go back and preach the same message again. I go, oh my, oh my. And so I go back and preach. I've done that three and four times in three and four weeks in a row. And people just, oh, hell, I mean, what are you going to preach tonight? If you're going to preach the same message you preached last week, I, I might just wait and come, you know, the following week. I just tell them, I said, you know what? I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. And evidently, this thing's going over your head like a, a like a scud missile. And until you get this in your heart, you and these other people, this may be the only message I'm going to be able to preach for the next only God knows when, and so uh, that. And I realize, folks, that church has got to the point where it's an entertainment center. You got to be entertained. The Word of God just isn't enough. I mean, you got to have the singing, you got to have the dancing, and you got to have somebody prophesying and giving tongues, interpretation of tongues, and people fall falling in the middle of the floor. They want to be entertained. People today want to be entertained. And that's what a voice said. You get around a real prophet of God, you're going to come to the word sake or you won't be coming. Because I'm not interested in entertainment. I'm not interested in awe on you by what God does in me or through me. You know, I've, I've told the people, I pick up every once in a while a spirit that has been a long time back now since we got into this movement, started the quarterlies. But, uh, you know, I, I, I tell the people, you know, I, I I can walk the aisles and, and stand people up and tell them exactly what's going on in their life. Talk about if they're sick, what the, what's wrong with them. But you know what the Lord told me about all that? He said they want to be entertained. And he said just, just put that to the side. Every once in a while, God will say, you speak this to that one or you say this to that about this or that. And I'll do that, but I don't do anything anymore until the Lord God speaks to me to do that. Why? Because, you see, that got to be such a big piece of entertainment in the church. You know, I've got, I, I, you know, I <laughs> jokingly, I've told the story so many, many times that uh, when I first started the first church, uh, there was an evangelist came through, and, and so, bless God, I invited a guy to come, to come and minister. And, uh, bless God, uh, uh, when he got done with his message, he gave everybody in that room a word from the Lord. And sometimes he'd go back and give them the second word from the Lord. And oh, it, 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 it would just it would upset me. And I kept thinking, you know, I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say something to him. I know that I am. And those of you who know me probably uh, figured it then sooner or later. But the Lord told me, he said, you just uh, you just said that. I'm gonna, I'm going to teach you something. Here. And so. What the, when he left, uh, bless God, uh, then the people uh, started coming to me and, and, and telling me that how much they appreciated when I began to operate in the word knowledge, which is telling people things that, that, that are in their lives and going on. And so I, I, I began to realize that there were people that just came for that. I had a friend that was a that, that's a minister, that still ministers today, and that's what he would seek out. He'd call me and said, oh, you know, Brother Decker, we need to go to such and such meeting. said, uh, I need a word from the Lord. And, you know, from that is when I learned, learned very, very well. You want a word, word from the Lord, uh, take your concordance, look it up, and then go to it, and that's God speaking to you, okay? This this. This the Holy Scriptures is God speaking to you. You want to hear God's voice today? You get into the Scripture, and I still believe that. I still believe that today, just as I believed it all the way back then. But I, I'm telling you, it is something. It is absolutely something uh, to think that uh, that people get so wrapped up in the entertainment. But again, that.
that's that's what people do. Okay, that's 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 what people do. And what can I do about that? No, not 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 anything in particular. But I can tell you one thing: uh, it's going to have to be God. If God's not, uh, you know, this this prophet this prophet didn't open his mouth up to say anything. Well, we're running out of time today, and I do want to pray for the people, and we again appreciate uh, the people that uh, that bless God, that God's uh, healing, give the miracles to us with this. I pray I'm sending that anointing uh, today across these phone lines, and uh, you just accept it. Because it will do in your life what God wants it to do. If you'll believe, if you'll believe that this prayer is meant for you, then I'm going to tell you something. It, it'll work. It'll work the way God wants it to work. Now, just put your hand, if if you can, on the area of your body that you need to be healed in, need a miracle. And uh, bless God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe God with you. Father, right now, in the name of your Holy Son, Yeshua, Lord God, to send forth your anointing right now into the homes across these uh, telephone wires and Lord God let it penetrate let the anointing penetrate from their heads to the bottoms of their feet and Lord God go to the area or areas in their body that need to be healed need a miracle and Satan I bind you right now in the name of Yeshua from these people and what I bind on this earth is bound in heaven itself and body I command you to receive this anointing that's coming forth. Be healed right now. For the stripes of Yeshua, be healed right now. Hallelujah. You just need to begin to thank God. You need to just open up your mouth and begin to praise Him and thank Him for what He's just now done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I also want to uh, uh, pray for those of you that, uh, that need deliverance. Now, we, we get a number of emails about people that... Uh, Believe in God to be be delivered and and uh, and they're being delivered. And you just hang in there. Uh, deliverance is something that bless God that that uh, is something you're going to have to wrestle with, okay? Because those spirits are going to come back. Like I said, once I cast these spirits out of you today, they're going to go to a dry place, according to the scripture. After a while, they're going to come back. They're going to have uh, uh, seven spirits stronger than that of they themselves. They're going to try to enter in. If they do, I'm going to tell you something. You you think you're a mess, you're going to be a total mess when that's all. But uh, all you got to do is reject. All you got to do is say, you know what? I've been delivered. You're not coming in. Go away in Yeshua's name. And those spirits will leave in the name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua. But folks, it just ain't that tough, as we say, okay? But you got to listen. And you got to do what you're being told to do. You know, you know, that's something a lot of people have a problem with anyway, is doing what they're told to do. If you just do what I'm telling you, bless God, you can walk, you can, you can literally walk away from everything that, bless God, that's not right, that's in your life, that is driving you toward darkness. You can walk away from those things. And, and that's what God wants for you. That's, that's the wonderful thing about deliverance. Bless God, it works in that way. Now, Father, right now, in the name of Yeshua, I take authority over every foul, stinking spirit of darkness that has attached themselves to the minds and the bodies of these people. And I command right now that those spirits, listen up, spirits, you come out right now in the name of Yeshua, and they be set free right now. And you too also need to glorify God for setting you free, because you're free. You are free. If you if you participated in this today, you're going to find out that that temptation is going to seem like it's not there, and then it's going to come back. But you're familiar to that, so when it comes back, just do what you've been told. Tell it to go away. You've been delivered in the name of Yeshua. They're not coming in. That's all that you've got to do. And, folks, I will guarantee you that that will work. Well, 